Yeah, I've called this one dynamic uh, date drop down list. It was a difficult one to actually title because it's a bit weird as to what I'm going to be doing. But this comes into play because people, I've seen a lot of switches to people have to actually have to put in today's date. Now, if you think about it, typing in today's date is really straightforward. Most of us know what today's date is. However, when you're actually working and you've got to try and type in the date, it takes a few extra seconds. What is it? You look down on your computer. Okay, that's today's date. You type it in, et cetera. It takes a bit of time. It's a bit of a faff. The other, the other thing is what happens if 99.9% .9 of the time you just have to simply put today's date and you want to try and make things a little bit quicker, a little bit more streamlined. You don't want to automate it to automatically put in today's date because you might want to have, you might want to be able to change it, but you want it to basically tell you what today's date is for ease. The other thing is when you then have to put in a due date, for example, five days after that date or whatever the case might be, um, then you want to be able to quickly put that date in because sometimes people will go, well, hold on, uh, we can just formulate that. Yes, you can, but then it's, stuck, it's, it's set in stone. What happens if you want to maybe adjust it and be able to override it or whatever the case might be? Sometimes you've got a situation where you've got a default number of days and then you want to be able to do all the projects with, those number, with that number of days. And then maybe you want to change the default, but you don't want to change all the existing projects times. You just want to change the new projects. So you actually want to be able to uh, manually input the days, but you want the spreadsheet to tell you how many days it is. And that's when we can ideally use these type of dynamic drop down lists. So I'll show you what I mean. This here, you'd eventually hide. So you wouldn't see these, these cells, um, but this here would be visible. So if, for example, you want to put today's date in here. So instead of coming in here and typing 21st of September or whatever the, the case might be, you want you just want to be able to select that and select today's date. So the best way to do this is on, on the outside of the page, which you'll hide away, is actually just to use equals today. Put it there, open brackets, close brackets, close it. And that will always be today's date. Um, if you want to have an exact one, you can put in equals now, open brackets, close brackets, and then format this to date and time. It'll give you the exact date and time. But for this purpose, we just want to put today's date. So if you put equals today, it'll give you today's date, and it's ready to be straightforward. Then when you come here, you can do a drop down list. So if you go to data and da data validation, you can say a list. What's the source? That's the source. Today's date. And now what you want to do is you want to be able to override the date. And if you leave it as it is like that, you can select today's date. But if for some reason you're entering data today that was from yesterday and you want to put in the 20th of September, it won't let you. So how do we get around that? Well, we go back to the data validation and you just click on the error alert and change that to information and remove that. So if you change information, information would normally pop up saying information and let you change it anyway. If you don't want to show the error alerts, you can uncheck that, click OK. Now it'll give you the option to either select today's date or you can even override it with, for example, the 26th of September, and it would do that. So that's just a quick way. So now when you're entering data, you don't have to think what's today's date. You just simply click on it, click it, and select the one date that's available, and you can go on. But it gives you the flexibility to be, to be able to override it. Now, let's just say, for example, we wanted to have a due date. So we said, well, we want today's date uh, plus however many days. So we let's say we want to set a due date, which is five days in the future. I'm not going to mess about at the moment with, with working days. There's a video to show you how to do that. I'm just going to do one plus the other. So if the due date equals that one plus the number of days, then that gives you the date of the 26th. And you do the same thing here into this one. So you go to data validation, info, take that off, settings. What do we want? We want a list. Which list? That cell. Okay. So now, if you don't have a date in there, it's going to give you a funny date. It's not going to make sense. You have to put them in in the order. Well, now when you put in today's date, and you can go to the due date, and it can tell you when that date is due, and you can just simply select it. You can format that as a date. And now you've got the two the two dates, but both of them will be overridable. You can be able to override the dates, et cetera. And one of the, the beauties of this is this is where you've got to think ahead when you're making your spreadsheet is if you've if you've got the setting somewhere and that's automated and that's automated, well then 
every time you open your spreadsheet, today's date's going to update and you don't want that. And if this is automated, then you maybe you're stuck, you it's set in stone. If you change the, the days due, all the previous projects that are going to change, et cetera. So you need to ask yourself, when you change the settings, do you want all the dates to update automatically? If the answer is yes, then don't do a drop down list because now if I change the date, they don't change. The ones behind the scenes change, but I'm going to have to go here and update all of these ones manually. So if you want them to update, then don't do it this way. Don't use a drop down list, use a formula and formulate it. Actually, just put that formula straight in there. But if you do want to be able to change this and only have it affect future projects, and not the stuff that you've already done, then doing a drop down list like this is the way to go. So essentially what we've done is we've used the background here to actually create the correct text and then just use the drop down in order to bring that in so we can very quickly manually select what we need to select rather than have it completely formulated and have us locked out manually or having to have us calculate and type in different days. It kind of gives you the best of both worlds. So I hope that that help is helpful to you. Um, in the right application, it most certainly will be, and I, I wish you all the best.